What's up, YouTube? This is Patrick Comedy Asta man. Hope you are ready for the week, man. We have a crazy week ahead of us, man. We had last week, the market really gave us huge, huge opportunities. And I think this week really gonna give us new opportunities. And of course, that we can make a lot of money. But we have to be, you know, prepared. We have to have our levels, you know, set up, our setups, you know, on the watch, and just gotta be ready to execute those levels. So, really quick, we're gonna go over the calendar. And, you know, what we have, you know, the thoughts, levels, you know, and, and a, you know, a couple setups that I do have on watch, right? I think that the Cooper, you know, gave us nice opportunities. So really quick, uh, if you're not enough a community, I'm really encourage you guys, you know, this is where I'm spending my time 24-7, my guidance, my live trading, all my trades. Many of you guys have been asking me, how can I get, how can you, how can you know I be in the team? Well, you know what to do. Uh, link is in the description, guys. Join up to the Alpha team. We are going to crush this week like we do every single week. You guys seen it. You know, my students are crushing it. So, you know, be on the team and let's get it. Now, tomorrow we don't have, you know, no events to schedule, as you can see here, which is good, right? I mean, think, I think we're coming from a very, very big flush down on Friday. So the market needs to recover somewhat, right? But we we're going to go into the technicals in a minute. Uh, then Tuesday, we do have PMI. We have new home sales report. Nothing really is going to move the market, right? So not, they're not events literally that they're going to, you know, spike that, but they're going to, you know, like flush on the market. So something that we want to keep an eye on it, but not really, uh, you know, interested on, on them, right? I mean, some, of you know, for sure, I think that Tuesday could be a nice day to trade since we don't have like too many volatility as far as, you know, uh, this type of data, right? When's the similar situation here? We don't have durable good orders, right? And, and you know, it's not going to move the market anyways, but I think that right now the market is, kind of waiting more for earnings and especially what's happening again on Israel, you know, this geopolitical issues is really what's kind of like driving the field on the market right now. Thursday though, I think Thursday is going to be definitely the days that want to start, you know, volatility that start coming in. We got GDP, uh, we got jobless report, we got US trade balancing goods, we have retail inventory. So we have, you know, several reports and again, mainly GDP and jobless, and they will, you know, mow the market in, in the direction that, it's going to be dependent on the data, of course. So we have to keep an eye on it. Again, don't over leverage yourself. And remember, always trade carefully on days where there is data because, you know, the market can switch side really quick. And then if you are on the wrong side of the trade, then you're going to lose a lot of money. Friday, we do have personal income. We got PCE over the year. We have, again, you know, core PC is as well another report that moves the market. And again, it could be even can make the market choppy. So you have to be aware of that. So I do think that you know, overall, I think the Thursdays and Friday size down, right? I think that when I think the Tuesday and Wednesday is gonna be the best day to trade, right? Monday, you know what to do, guys. Observe, be patient, don't get stuck the first day of the week. Cause I think we have more, you know, opportunities ahead. So you don't want to be losing a lot of money on the first day of the week, right? Now, if we do go back to the sentiment of the market, we've been talking about this for a minute, right? You cannot let me lie. Those of you watching me, I told you guys from the beginning, we were already hitting peak. And this is what we are right now. You know, the market was from 70, 71, 61, greed. And now we are on fear. The market is on fear for many reasons, right? We we have the war. We got the economy, right? Not at its best point. But this is actually something that, you know, this could be as an opportunity, right? We, and you probably heard this before, you know, we buy the fear and we sell the greed. That is how things worked out, right? We're trying to start now with the time that we're still looking at places or, again, long-term uh, companies that we like for this, you know, this huge pullback that we're probably going to start, you know, accumulating once again for the next run up, right? And remember, you know, companies that are here been on the market for some time, uh, they will recover eventually, right? Regardless if you're being a long-term investor, I think that they will recover. But, and again, many stocks as well, they're going to come back down to, you know, clear levels of support that you want to look it up and probably, you know, get your started position, right? And keep on tracking it. But that doesn't mean, guys, that it can definitely go lower because it definitely can. We've seen the market many times on extreme fear. So that will mean that the market can go down. And yes, there is more room to go down. So, and I'm going to go, you know, deep that on those levels here in a minute. But be aware that we can still go down. I mean, don't fight a trend, right? Be ready for buy. You know, you probably buy the zips, but you have to let the market fall until it gives you proper confirmation that it's going to reverse. So, really click on our SPY, right? Again, we already broke 500s, 
500 was a psychological level, something that we been watching this for a minute, but we cracked that, right? We literally cracked it. And then now we all not only did broke the level, we are breaking our trend lines, right? In the past, we've been gapping up, right? The market was just absolutely ripping every week, every day was, you know, making new highs, gapping up. But as you can see here, gaps tend to fill at some point. Now, don't, not all the gaps are gonna fill. Remember this, not all the stocks fill the gaps, but mostly when we're talking about large gaps or indexes, it tends to really fill the gaps. So right now, you can see here, we, we're pretty much fill, we already filled the gap from February that we made from 495 to 500. That gap is filled. We filled that on Friday. So usually, right, I've seen it many times, we tend to bounce from the gaps, right? So that means that we can have a bounce. Now, remember, guys, we're not going to drop in a straight down line, right? It's the same thing where we're going up. We don't, we don't go up in a straight up line. We're gonna you know, reject, we're gonna pull back, and then we're gonna keep going out. The same thing happens when we're downtrending. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna bounce at some point, we might consolidate, and then probably gonna, you know, make for the next leg. But don't be trying to as well be a perma bear that you only think that's puts, 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 and then you're gonna get stuck, and then you know, the, you know, the market recovers, have a nice bounce, and then you're gonna be stuck on puts. Don't do that. You have to trade the market as it is every single day. That's what you gotta assess the market. Because you want to be ready for any direction that the market gives you, right? The market is very bipolar. Again, I'll tell you, it's how it's very unstable. So you have to be ready for those things, right? But clearly right now, if we zoom a little bit quick on what we have right now, all right, let me get, let me really quick dive in those levels. So see, we're sitting, we went as low as 493.86 on SPY. And right now, right, since we already filled the gap down, the current support that we have is a 494.37, right? If we do crack that, we are open up all the way down to the next support. And the next support is going to be on 488.66, and we have 484.39, right? Those are lower levels. And this is if on the, you know, the again, in the worst case scenario that we actually continue dropping down, right? Which, which we probably could, right? We have a lot of sudden pressure, but keep in mind that we're start getting oversold on several time frames that it means that eventually we can get that bounce to the, you know, recover, right? Keep that in mind. Now, if we're looking for upside levels, right? If we do have this bounce, we really want to look for the resistance levels. So we have 495.30, that's one of the ones, that's the nearest, the nearest one. Then we have uh, 500.30, that of course, if the bulls, you know, recover the 500 level, we definitely, you're gonna see them push the hardest that they can because they want to recover that number, right? So watch that 500. If we got a balance, if we got a recovery, that is going to be critical. But as long as we don't reclaim that 500, bears are going to do the best that they can and they're going to push this price down, okay? Now, again, the weekly are not looking good, right? We go look at the weekly chart on on, test, on SPY and we're we're right there, you know, we're tapping that, you know, that uh, 20 May, right? So it's, we're in a beta critical zone. But again, we can break down. Right, four ninety three point thirty one is the uh the weekly here on spy the twenty eight May. So once we break down, we're gonna open up very hard on the daily again. We are really close below the sixty and the twenty, right? That we also open up for a you know probably here in you know couple months if things doesn't change, we can come back down and test the four sixty nine, that four seventy two hundred MA. That is, it's right on the daily chart, right? So keep in mind, these are just ideal targets, you know, and scenarios, but nothing is gonna be is gonna be guaranteed. As the market you know, the market can reverse, can bounce, can do many, many things. So we have to be aware of all the situations, right? Tesla, we have earnings this week. And again, we already called this. We played Tesla all the way down, you know, since it gap down on earnings. I told you guys these earnings are bad, they suck, they're terrible. You have to, you know, follow the trend, even though Tesla tried to you know, have some recovery, you don't fight a trend. And again, you don't fight the numbers, right? Numbers were terrible on Tesla, guidance was terrible. And, and you know, the, the, you know, the amount of bad news that the company had, it, it was just kind of obvious when, you know, where the stock's going to head until the next earnings. Remember, investors, big money, they look forward for, you know, forward statements, right? Forward guidance. And so if you don't give them good guidance, they're going to pull out the money, right? Everybody's going to pull out the money. And this is what we're seeing right now. So, of course, we are getting to the point of oversold territory, but still, we don't know what's going to happen in earnings. So the best thing that we can do here, guys, is if you are going to be watching, if you're going to be trading, whatever you do, don't hold through earnings, right? Don't gamble this. Cause it's not going to be, it's not going to be the way that you want. It never does. Mostly the times it doesn't, it doesn't do it. 
So don't gamble. I mean, this is not a casino. But again, I will probably wait for the earnings calls, which is going to be in the 23rd, which is, that is Tuesday. You know, whatever the, you know, Elon is going to say, you know, listen to it. And if you're really, you know, a long-term investor, and you definitely want to hear what he's going to say, right? I mean, he's just recalling the cyber trucks. He just put those things on the road and now he's just recalling them. So that's not even like a good look for them, right? So it's a lot, you know, things, you know, bad things that he's going through. But since we're currently sitting at this 146.90, you know, a couple of levels that we want to look, right? Let me zoom out really quick here. So the next support that we have, it's on, let me pull it up here. So we have 146.50, that's the nearest one. And then we also, we're going to have 140.80, right? We do crack this 140. We're going to start moving to lower lows, right? Now, you know, we're talking about no eight, nine draw, dollar drop, which earnings can really do it, right? I mean, if, if the, really the earnings are going to be as, as bad as that we can think, yes, I mean, our earnings are going to be the move that's going to give you that move, but as well, you know, we can also have a bounce, right? If we do have this bounce, you can consider that there are small gaps that, you know, maybe Tesla can fail, right? If for, if for extra reasons, you know, we have this, this recovery, you got to think there are a couple gaps that we can, you know, fill. There's a small gap here over from 152.16, to 153, there is another gap to fill from 158 all the way down to 161. So, you know, a couple of numbers that you want to keep in out in order to uh to trade this week. But the nearest one, right? First of all, right, if we hang around this report. We let's say we do play this double bottom because it seems that we're forming a double bottom right here. If we are able to bounce and break, you know, reclaim the 150, which is a strong signal like a level, I think that we're gonna go and retest this 153s which is going to be the 20 EMA, right? If we do break the EMA, then we possibly are going to start moving up, right? Testing resistance, which is 154.72. And if he does that, we're going to start moving up to the previous highs, which is the 160. I remember, 160, it was an area that it was holding for several, several weeks. And again, the fact that we broke that, it means that we can possibly retest it if we have some bars, right? So we're going to keep down on that. Again, I'm always going to be updating you guys throughout the week. So don't miss the videos, right? Turn notifications on. Like and subscribe, guys, because I'm going to be going over this every single day, right? Don't miss the updates. Now, NVIDIA, I talk about this. I told you how critical was this support right here and how the critical was it to 100 mate. But we broke that. We flushed down. We did what we were supposed to do. And now we're coming back to a very critical level with NVIDIA. I actually made a video about this yesterday, and I told you how this is how can this play out so the media is coming back down to this gap down right there's a huge gap that we created on earnings there were previous earnings right last time so usually it, it, i've seen this like most of the times right i mean it's not guaranteed guys but once a stock drops this fast as it did in media and it comes back down to a gap right it's gonna bounce from there it's gonna bounce from the start of the gap meaning that since we are 762 we can possibly make another move, small move, that was 741.59, which is going to be the start of the gap. Bounce, probably consolidate for the a minute, you know, retail resistance. And again, if the market is still weak, then we probably can go for that gap down. Consider that most of the stocks, again, most market, most of these big stocks are getting oversold, right? So again, it's started getting attractive for several buyers. They're going to try to catch this, you know, this dead cat bounce. They're going to try to catch this bounce. So don't get caught on the run decision. Now, this gap goes all the way down from 741.59 to 689.60, right? So we're talking another $50, $60 drop, you know, average here in, in order to fill this gap. And media moves crazy. Just, we just moved almost, almost $100 just on Friday. And this is happening a lot, Right. And this is not the first time that we've seen, you know, this is kind of this crazy things being done for NVIDIA. So you have to be ready. I already made a video on last night. Watch it, learn it, because, you know, how to ride a trend is going to be critical for you and your success. So you have to make a lot of money, how to ride a trend, how to maximize your profits. You need to learn this. But, the, you know, the levels that we're going to keep it out tomorrow, guys, again, if we, if we come back down, we'll return to the support, you know, 741.72 is going to be the number. And if we do bounce, right? And we have, you know, we have some type of recovery. You want to look for this resistance. So 772.28 is going to be resistance. And if we break down, we have a nice, you know, like room to, you know, retest 800s. Again, 800s is a single like a level. So we want to look for that 
interesting how to see how it's going to play out, all right? Now, quick of day, you know, a lot of people have been talking about halving, what's going on, how crypto stocks going to react, you know. We've seen, you know, Bitcoin, uh, several, you know, uh, you know, uh, altcoins, they've been kind of bouncing yesterday, right? The halving has been completed. We will see how this reacts, right? I mean, historically, and some people say, yes, we're going to see Bitcoin like 80, 70, 90, 100s. You look, look, what, look, man, I don't guess, I don't speculate, I trade what I see and I trade what the direction is telling me. So right now, you see Bitcoin is quickly hanging around this, you know, this range. You know, it's from 60, you know, 60,000 all the way up to like 73,000, 72,000. So that is a range that has been doing. And I'm not dating this because many people, many of you guys have been watching crypto. And again, Bitcoin is, is the only directional stock, well, not our stock, you know, uh, you know, crypto that really moves a lot of stocks, right? There are a lot of mining stocks that then move, Myra, Riot, that many of you guys trade that, you know, it, it's always good to keep an eye on this one. So as long as Bitcoin consolidates here, and this is why you're seeing many of these stocks, you know, dipping down, right? People are even asking, oh, so should I buy now, you know, Riot, Myra? Well, let me tell you, it's it's getting to a bounce, it's bouncing, but be careful because this these stocks can continue to drop down, if Bitcoin still keeps consolidating, right? You know, you can look at the quick look on Madden Ryder. They look at the date bounce because they came back to the critical areas, but that doesn't mean that it can go lower. They definitely can. Don't get trapped. Don't get that holding. This is that. That is this is that is not investing, right? This is trading, guys. Don't get stuck on the wrong stocks, right? Now, a couple of setups that I'm watching, right? You guys know I talk about NKGN, right? This stock is it's pretty particular. We had a nice cut up. And again, if you don't want to miss this trade, guys. Right, you know what to do, be in alpha community. I alerted this on last week on Friday, man. And that was I had a nice run up. I told my students I was adding more at 87 cents. And we had a nice run up, a huge squeeze of NKG all the way down to 1.6. So almost a hundred run on on the day. Only the stock particular, even though the market was falling, we squeezed the stock, right? We literally moved the stock here, you know, because we had a bounce, we saw the bottom and we move it, right? Now. This can potentially happen again. It is it is possible. They do have a presentation right this week, right? They're looking to to participate on again on this summit, and it's supposed to happen on this from the twenty third to the twenty fifth. So I will be very aware, right? I'm gonna be very really being like you know cautious on this, but of course I can see that there is some bars stepping in on this. Looking at the daily chart, we filled the gap down. We had the bounce. Now let's see if we can bar start stepping in. And again, I would love to see this around two dollars, right? Last time we went to four dollars. I'm not asking four. I'm really, really asking here for this for two because we already went to one sixty with low volume, right? So let's see if we can, you know, accumulate some bars if we can move up to like two dollars, right? If we do that, that would be great. But remember, we want to see critical levels to break right now. So right now we're at one point twenty. So we'll probably wait for the one point twenty seven break. Which is gonna be the one the 60 MA once it does. I think that we can move up to 130s, 140s, and we possibly can go for that retest of the 200 MA at 1.63, right? Again, of course, if we do break that one, then we definitely we're gonna open up to twos. Now we trade another one. Look W N W. This is a Chinese company that I've been watching for a minute, right? It, you know, we've been keeping an eye on the alpha community in this one, and there seems to be some accumulation on you know the four hour chart, right? For a couple of several days, we've been accumulating, you know, last couple of times that, you know, W and W, you know, had a lot of spikes, right? Last time went from a dollar all the way down to 1.73. Last spike went for like a, almost a dollar again to 1.22. So I do believe that if there is some bottom coming here and we can have a nice pop again, we break 130s, 120s. I think we can see, you know, test the 200 at 1.39. I told you guys how the 200 EM is like a magnet. So we, there is a pop, there is a volume that is buying pressure. We tend to move towards it, right? And looking at the daily chart as well, there's been several, several accumulation here, right? Now, the daily as well, the stock, if in the past, it went to reverse split, right? And, and looking at the daily chart as well, showing signs of, you know, of accumulation, right? We are, you know, the RSI is at 45, 153. Look at this, this big gas last time for like $92, to $2. So we just want to keep an eye on this one, you know, for a potential move on this in the, you know, in the, in the, in the near future, right? And remember, guys, you know, you want to size in properly, risk management, always make your DD, guys. If you're not comfortable with the trades, don't trade in. You know, nobody's forcing you. Remember, not this is not financial advice. You want to, you know, look into it if you like it. If, you know, if, if it fits all your boxes, you know, fits your criteria, then you can take the trades. 
And remember, you know, there is always chances that things doesn't go as planned. And this is why you want to have a risk management and a stop loss, right? So that's one. And I think that the late, you know, the last one I'm going to keep an eye on it for today, guys. We traded this one a while ago. We It was a banger. And I'm going to keep an eye on this one once again, you know, HWH. And the reason is because we're back to critical area of support. As you can see here, you know, this 120s, $1, you know, we came back down as low as like 95 cents, as you can see on the chart, right? which we did several times. So we had a nice bound to 1.4, 130s. So there is some eyes on this. There is some volume on, you know, coming to here, but there is something that I don't like, right? They don't like offerings. I hate those because they can hit you really hard. You know, they failed. They failed an S1 on April 8th. So there could be a potential drop down here, right? So mainly this is, again, this could be a possible quick day trade, right? If they really want to probably drop the offering, they're going to have to wait for a bigger pop, in my opinion. But if you want to trade is be very, very careful, right? Because offerings can drop anytime. When they do, the drop is going to be very, very aggressive. So again, I'm probably going to keep an eye on them because if I do see a nice trend, I'm probably going to day trade it just for the day. Get in, get out. Don't overstay your welcome because again, that can happen and you're going to, you know, very, very, you know, uh, regret that, right? Never overstay on stocks that they have offerings because they can really hit you back. And this is very common on the bios, you know, on the bios bio stocks, right? Yes. So again, we have more and more setups. And again, we can talk, we can continue talking all night. But again, if you want to know more about this, more of my trades, you know what to do, guys. Join to the community, right? There's the link in the description. If you have any question, guys, let me know. Send me a DM, tag me in the chats. Right. I hope this helped you guys with levels, you know, some couple of things to look up for the week. I mean, we let's be ready, man. Let's get it. I mean, we have a lot to do. But again. I hope to see you guys on the community. Be safe, take care. And again, I'll catch you guys on tomorrow market. All right, guys? Bye, guys. What's up, guys? This is Wild Patrick coming at you guys today. If you guys want to start making some money and achieving those goals that you're not afraid of, you guys are looking for, you need to start investing in yourself. You need to start investing in knowledge. All right, so join me to the Alpha community. I'll be there with you guys, guiding yourself to the market. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow on the market because I'm going to get you guys get some money. All right, so see you guys.